Hey, what's up? Jason here from Unity3D.College. In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about debugging in Unity. I see a lot of posts about debugging that usually go over things like the console log and how to write things there and read from there and try to figure out what's going on. So I want to dive into a couple other options, different ways that you can debug stuff that can sometimes be more helpful. So I've got a little hockey game here, and you'll see what I've got is four characters. They're going to run to their little starting positions. They'll line up, have a quick countdown. They'll fight over the puck. One of them will shoot, and he gets a goal. Now they should return, reline up, and then grab the puck and start going again. But as you can see here, something is seriously wrong. So the, one of the first things I like to do is just select one of the objects that's acting up. So let's see, I'm going to jump over to the scene view so you can see this a little better. So I've got this character selected, and I'm going to go in the inspector and just open up debug mode. So in debug mode, I can see the private variables on this thing. Every component has private variables that become visible. Um, so let's see, in the character movement stuff, seems relatively fine. He's setting some destinations and going there. Uh, there's nothing I can really look at in the nav mesh or the collider. Uh, the brain also just isn't really debuggable because there's not a lot of scriptable objects or any serialized components on there. But if I look at the character, the private fields are the last puck steal attempt. This is like the last timestamp that he tried to steal the puck at. And if we look right here, you can tell that's definitely wrong. That's not a timestamp, and the time should be continuously going up. So let's dive in and see what's going on here. So if I look at this character, this is the character script, and I'm going to select the last puck steal attempt. And I just used um, Shift F12 in here to find all the references. And I can see it's right here, so it gets set right here when he loses the puck. We set it to time.time, dot time, and here we set it again. And you may already see the problem, but let's just go through this for anybody who doesn't. I'm going to hit, what I'm going to do is put a breakpoint right here. So a breakpoint, I just click over here in this left area, and I'm going to hit attach to Unity. Now what's going to happen is when this, when any character tries to take the puck, when they call this try take puck method, we're going to stop, execution of the game will pause completely, and then we can step through line by line and see what's going on. So the default hotkey in Visual Studio for C Sharp to step into a method, so to actually go in and see what's inside puck steal attempt timer met, is F11. So I'm going to hit F11, and if we look right here, let's hide this properties area, we don't need that. If we look right here, we check to see that the time minus the last puck steal attempt is greater than puck steal interval. So we're checking that this minus this is greater than that. And so time right now is 81. You can see if I put the mouse right over it, I can see it pop up. Puck steal attempt is 0 0.0018, which is, or sorry, 0 0.018, which is a really, really small number. Definitely doesn't feel like a timestamp. Cool. So let's step out of this. We'll just use F10 to continue along. And F10 just goes to the next line. F11 goes inside a method. F10 just goes or continues on to the next line with, and it'll skip over a method and just run it. So here you can see we're setting last puck steal attempt to time dot delta time. And if you remember, we're doing the subtraction there. This is wrong. We can also see that down here. So if you look and see, at one point we're setting it to time dot time. Here we're setting it to time dot delta time. That's definitely a bug. So I'm just going to jump in. I'm going to stop debugging. You can't edit while you're debugging in Unity. So I stop, and I'm just going to change that to time. Now I've found one bug. Let's hit play and see what happens. So we have to restart the editor, or not the editor, the game. Restart and see what's going on here. So let's see, here they go. They ran, they lined up, and they're going to shoot the puck. There we go, it looks like it's fixed. All right, we found the error. There, it looks like there's still something going on with that guy right there. But we figured out the other problem, right? So we've got two guys that are still kind of acting up. Um, could be a bug, could just be unimplemented code. So now that I've showed a little bit of just how to stop and step through in the debugger, 
I want to show how to add in some extra debugging stuff in the editor. So you can see here, I've got quite a bit of debugging info going on. So here, let's take another quick look. Once I grab the puck, I'll pause it. So one of the things I do in this game, ah, where'd we go, is uh, with the puck, just so I could nice and easily visualize who had the puck, I just made a simple indicator that just shows up over the character who owns the puck. So this is just a game object with a cylinder and a little script in here. And if we look at this script, you'll see all I do is check to see if the puck is held by a character. So if the held by character is not null, I set this position to the current character's position plus, uh, what is it, vector 3 dot up times 2. So just two units on the y-axis above the character. This is just one really simple way to see who has control of this thing, since it's not always obvious who's controlling the puck, especially if something's bugged and the puck is way over there and it's supposed to be under a character and I don't know who's got it, who's supposed to have it. it makes it a little bit easier. But let me jump back into um, some of this other stuff. So we've got this text right here, right? This It says guard area, can steal puck, true, in puck steal range, true. So what I'm showing here is the character's AI state. So each one of these characters has a state. They'll go into an offensive state if they have the puck and they're going towards the goal. They'll go into an idle state when they sit there and line up. If nobody has the puck or somebody else has the puck, they go into a chase puck state where they just start running after it or skating after it. Um, let me show you how I do that though. I've got an AI state visualizer game object here and you can see all it has is an AI state visualizer script. And then that script has a color, so I can modify the color of this text, right? If I want to make this red or purple or whatever will show up well, right? How about white? Let's make it white. And then it's got a style here too, so I can just adjust the font size. I'll leave it alone for now. I'm gonna look at this script though. So got a couple things. There's a height offset. I don't know if you saw that. Let me just jump right back in. So you can see like I've got this offset here so I can adjust how high above the characters their state info shows. And I can also adjust it on the X and Z axis, but I'll just leave it at zero for this. And then we cache our characters. So we just get all of the brains for the characters. That's their AI component. And we do that in, um, where do we do that? Uh, right here in on draw gizmos. So if we don't have the players that are loaded right now, we just grab them all, put them into this array. And then what I do is just go through and loop through each one and I create a text object that has the bot player. This is their brain. I should rename this one. I rename it now. Uh, character brain. I renamed this script a while ago. But I didn't update all of the references yet to have good naming. So what I do is I create a, a text component. Let's split this out a little bit more. So it's a little easier to see. Or sorry, I'm creating a string here that's going to go on to a text component. The string has the character brain's two string value, and then we do the character's two string value. So we're putting these on two separate lines. You might wonder what this is. So the two string by default will just return back the type of an object. If it's a number, it'll return the number, but anything else, it's just going to return back the type. So if I had like a character by default, it's going to say like, character and then you'll see a little bit of extra info there but it won't have anything really useful so what i like to do is just override the two string method so if you go on to a class you can do public override string two string and what this is going to do is just change the value that comes back when you call two string on something uh, this is a really common practice for debugging stuff or just getting more info of, over, about things um, sometimes people use it on like a person They'll override the two string to have the first name and last name field. So instead of returning back person as the, the value, you get back their actual names. Here, what I like to do in my Unity projects is usually put in a little bit of debugging and pulling the two string thing. So then I can tell what's going on. So here you can see in this two string, I check to see if there's a state. If there is, I return it. Otherwise, I return back none. If it's ever none, I know that there's no AI state going on. Something's definitely wrong, right? And if it's not, then I can see which state it is. And if I go into the states, you'll see this one's not overridden. This is actually straight from object. So it's just going to return back the name of the type. 
And let's see what that looks like real quick. So you can see right here, offense, state, and guard area. Those are actually names of types in my scripts. So if we look at like uh, let's see, current state, AI state, there are a bunch of AI states. We have offense, state, guard area, these right here. So this is what's coming back. So like I said, just that name. Now let me jump back over to the two string part for the character brain. If I look in here, you'll see what I'm returning is an interpolated string. So this is just like using string.format. If you're not using the Unity 4.6 experimental stuff, you can't do this, but you can get the same functionality by appending strings or using string.format. So what we're doing is returning back whether or not they can steal the puck, which is coming from this variable or this method right here. And then we also do a new line and we put an entry in there for if they're in puck steal range. So you can see right here, this is can steal puck false, in puck steal range false. So those are just a couple really basic level things that you can do to debug stuff. Like I said using the debugger and actually attaching, setting a breakpoint and then looking at data can be extremely useful. It's also really helpful when you want to just step through the flow of things and kind of figure out exactly what's going on without adding a bunch of logs and trying to read through those logs. If you can just step through, just hit F10 and see exactly what's happening at each level of execution and what the variables are set to, um, it can often give you a lot of extra insight that you can't easily get without adding a ton of logs. So try those things out. Um, this also works in mono develop. I don't know if any of the other editors that or unofficially work for Unity have debugging support yet. I just use Visual Studio. I think it's still the best option out there. Um, if you have questions about this stuff, though, just drop a comment or uh, send me an email. Drop by the site at unity3d.college. And uh, again, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and get subscribed when you're done.